Garden designers, quite rightly, would suggest that we treat our gardens as a whole, in design terms. But in reality, it's much easier for most of us to do things bit by bit. And also, you may be basically quite happy with your garden as a whole, but there's a part of it that's got neglected, or you're not really happy with it, or you're using your garden in a different way. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog, and this is the first of two videos about redesigning various bits of your garden that may not be exactly the way you want them at the moment. We've redesigned various corners and parts of our garden, so I'm picking up the garden design ideas that we've used, plus adding some that I've spotted in other gardens or the shows. This is the first and we'll be dealing with the area close to the house because that's what you see when you step out of the door or look out of the windows. And the second video will be dealing with difficult corners and neglected areas, so do tap subscribe if you don't want to miss that. There are two quite important principles about the area just outside the house. And the first one is that it's often good to make it the more formal or structured area and then you can get a bit wilder or more relaxed as you go further away from the house. And that works even with quite a small garden. And the second thing is that when it's close to the house, it's really good if it reflects the, either the architectural style of your house or your own interior style, so there's a sense of flow. For example, this garden, designed by garden writer Francine Raymond, is linked to a house with yellow bricks and grey slate, and Francine has picked up both the shape of the bricks and the yellow and the grey in everything she's done around the garden, particularly close to the house. For our garden, our garden slopes up as you came out of the back door, so we decided to get rid of the slope by creating a terrace, and we call that the parterre. And we used four paths to mimic the four rooms of the house, so that there's some kind of architectural link from the house and the garden. However, another important garden design principle is that you need to balance mass and void. And mass is things like trees and pergolas and sheds and shrubs and planting. And void is the flat areas like a terrace or a lawn or even a path. Now, looking at our parterre when it started, it was a lot of void. It was very flat. And so the question is, what do you do when you want to actually bring some mass into a void like that? Well, of course, mostly it's called a focal point. If you've got a small garden, it's likely that this area immediately outside the house will be used for seating, and that's one very good idea. We already had seating in a terrace just outside the house, so the parterre wasn't going to be used for seating. An artist friend of ours pointed out that actually we needed some height in there, that's the mass void thing, and he suggested we get a pergola, but that was over 10 years ago, and it's taken us all that time to find a pergola that we could actually afford and that we liked. And that comes up to another important principle of garden design, which is that there's a direct correlation between time and money. The garden makeover programmes on TV would suggest that for really quite a modest budget, you can suddenly have your whole garden transformed. But most of us in the gardening world suggest you add a naught to those budgets that are put on garden TV makeover programmes. And that when you're doing your own garden, if budgets are tight, be prepared to take some time. But, of course, you can have great fun experimenting along the way because we've loved our parterre in the ten years it didn't have the pergola. We started off by putting planting in there and, of course, planting is a very good way of filling that void. We've got lavender and we also had pots, big pots, a group of pots, which had plants in them. Then I decided to go for one very structural pot and so I chose a topiary spiral which was in a big pot in the centre. Now a big pot also is going to cost you quite a lot of money but I got that as a seconds. It's actually got a firing crack in it but that doesn't affect uh, the way it reacts to frost or cold or anything. It won't crack. Then after a few years of the topiary spiral we moved the topiary spiral over into this corner and then we got a sundial which was given to us by some friends. And by that stage the lavender had grown up and it was enough mass because the sundial otherwise would perhaps have looked a bit small in the middle of the area. And then we heard from a friend that a pergola was actually in her garage, she was renovating it and she was able to sell it to us for a good price. So at last we found a pergola that we liked and that we could afford. If you're going to put a pergola in the centre of your garden, you do need a flat space. So we got some landscapers in to make the space in the middle of the garden a little bit bigger. That's to make it easier to walk round and through, but also you do need a support for the four corners of the pergola. You can't just put it on lawn. 
If you do want to put it on lawn, you can get posts and they can be concreted into the ground. Another really successful thing you can do near the house is to have a big border or lots of planting. And actually, because the area outside the back of our house is quite wide, we've got both the parterre and a border, which we can see from the kitchen window all year round. Now, obviously, the downside of a big planting area just outside the house is it, it's more work than anything that you have further away, which is perhaps a little wild and a little more neglected. However, if it's close to the house, it's easier just to pop out and do a little bit of weeding. There's much more motivation to work on it. A variation on this is to have a path down the centre of the garden and lots of planting on either side. Once again, that'll give you loads of colour and life when you look out of the window or step out of the door. You can also have a pond in the centre of the area. This pond in the centre of the Great Dixter Barn Garden has made this garden area the most biodiverse part of the garden and indeed one of the most biodiverse areas that the ecologist had ever actually analysed. You could have a raised pond, that often looks good. It's worth remembering if you're doing a pond for wildlife that a wildlife can't get in and out when there's very high sides. So you might have to think that one through a bit. You could have a fountain such as this Charleston garden at RHS Hampton Court, or you could perhaps even just a rill like this garden designed as a show garden for Liz Earle. Another thing you might want to do is to break up the space in your garden a bit more. And for example, you could use a sort of fake ruined wall or a folly. And we've got a video which I'll put in the description below about garden ruins and follies. The great thing they can do is that they can create a microclimate as well as looking like an ornament. They're actually quite practical because the sunny side of them is often warm because of the wall. And then there's a shady side where you can grow things like ferns. And of course, one of the things that is quite successful and quite surprising that you can do in the middle of a garden is actually have trees. Now, this works very well if, for example, you've got a wide, shallow garden, like in this garden designed by Posy Gentles. It's wider than it is deep, and so if you come out of the back door and there's nothing in the middle of the garden, your eye hits the back fence almost immediately. But if you've got something like perhaps these two fruit trees, your eye kind of works its way around it and it's a bit longer journey and therefore the garden looks and feels bigger. So don't discount having trees in the centre of your garden. So now let's have a look at what you can do in neglected corners and difficult areas. And so let's go over to video two, which is here. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.